Hello, my friends. A very good morning, a good dawn, and God bless you all. And may the Spirit of God enlighten the understanding of each of you so that each of you can comprehend, perceive, discern the Word of God. We have been here daily speaking about faith, faith, the faith that takes possession of great things, the faith that remains, the faith that makes the person receive peace and to live in peace. However, we also need to observe something extremely important in regards to faith, which is the fact that many people have had faith to conquer many things. However, few people have had faith to remain in the faith. And these are two completely different things. And we see that in the text of Luke chapter 17, when the ten leprous men, excuse me, the ten leprous men, they showed up before Jesus and rose their voice saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So the ten of them, they were together and they cried out to Jesus because they had heard of Jesus' fame for sure. And Jesus seeing said, go show yourselves to the priests. That's all he said. Look at that. How wonderful. When a person's faith is ready to be used. Whatever you tell them to do, they will do it. And that's what they did. They obeyed the word of the Lord Jesus without questioning, without anything, without any doubt, any fear. They had nothing to lose anyways, isn't it? So they obeyed. And they turned their back and they went towards the priests who had authority to check, to make sure whether or not they were ready to be inserted in society once again. Because back then, leprous people had to stay away from people, from the population. They had to be isolated in the desert. And that's how they lived isolated from everything and everyone. But when Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priests, they did not question him. They obeyed. And this is the secret of faith. The faith that conquers is like this. The faith that conquers is this one. It's obedience, that's all. You don't have to feel faith. You don't have to have that sensation of faith. Either you believe or you don't. If you believe, you obey. If you don't believe, you won't obey. It's that simple. It's easy and objective, straight to the point. Everybody can have that. No one has to pay anything and it's free of charge. However, when they went, they were cleansed even before they presented themselves to the priests. They were already cleansed. Just the attitude of sincerity made them clean. But what happened? One of them, only one, you already know the story, seeing that he was healed, returned glorifying God with a loud voice. 
you can imagine the joy of that ex-leprous man. Can you imagine? He was confined to solitude, to the desert. But when he was cleansed from his leprosy, something extraordinary, magnificent, he came back to glorify God and fell down on his face at his feet. It says, he fell down on his face at his feet. His face was at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan, and Samaritans didn't get along well with the Jews. So, Jesus seen that attitude of faith, of permanent faith, because he, they had faith to be healed. However, only one had faith to remain in the faith, because he fell down on his face and gave thanks to Jesus. And Jesus said, were not there ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Where are the nine? Obviously, all of them were healed. And Jesus already knew that. Jesus healed all ten of them, and he knew that only one would come back. But still he asked, why? Because this is the, the way that human beings are. Human beings are like that. They receive the blessing and bye-bye. Thank you, thank God, and they go live their life. And that's what the other nine did. They had faith to be healed, but they did not have faith to not even come back and say thanks to Jesus. Imagine following Him. And that's what happens with many people. They receive the blessings, they are healed, they are delivered, their life is transformed, and so on. But with time, many people get discouraged. Over time, they get busier with the blessings, more preoccupied with the blessings, you know, handling the blessings than with the one who blessed them, the Lord who blessed them. So, my friend, pay close attention. This is fundamental. God knows beforehand who will be saved and who will not. Many are called, but few are chosen. And the few that are chosen are the ones who remain in the faith. For example, yesterday we had a great revival of peace. Many people made a covenant of peace with God. Many people were blessed with being able to watch many testimonies daily. However, not everyone, not everyone will remain in this faith, unfortunately. Why is that? Because they resolved their problems, their belly is now full, they're not hungry anymore, they have no more need, so they will take care of their life. Which means they treat God with contempt because, okay, Lord, thank you so much, you healed me, I testified to others, I gave my testimony, I was healed and this and that. But over time, they lose the focus from the faith of this permanent faith in order to live according to the world. 
and that's when they turn to the world. And they think that the blessing they conquered will remain, but it won't. Because faith is like this. If you have it, then you conquer. As long as you remain in the faith, you will continue overcoming the, the obstacles and the hardships. You will continue overcoming. However, if by any chance you abandon faith, if you place your faith in second plan, then you are going to lose it. You are going to lose it because if by faith we conquer, by doubt we lose. And when the person forsakes their faith, they are immediately in the field of doubt. And that's what has been happening to many people inside of the churches, including the universal church of the kingdom of God. People, even pastors as well, pastors' wives and so on and so on. Why? Because people apparently they get sick from the faith. Many people in the case of these nine leprous men, they were healed. Okay, let me go and take care of my life now. Let me go back home to my family. Let me get a job and so on. They prioritized now their own life. And they forgot that not too long ago they had been abandoned. And they were alone. They were living from desert to desert, confined to solitude, to death. They were bound to die. But now that they received life, okay, thank God my problem is resolved. It means they treated Jesus as a doctor. You go to the doctor, your belly ache is gone. Okay, bye-bye. Whatever is your problem, you resolve the problem thank you so much, thank God, and so on, but then you go take care of your life. But with God, that's not how it works. Faith is not like that. Faith is not a tool for you to just take possession of things or people. Faith is a tool for you to remain alive throughout eternity because the righteous shall live by faith shall live by faith and if he draws back the Lord says my soul has no pleasure in him so you have to agree with me and for sure the Holy Spirit is already speaking to many people right now for sure you have to understand the following your life is not limited to the body that you see because this will all end Sooner or later, this will end. Everything will end. There will be left a stone upon another. However, those who remain in the faith, these are the ones who are going to get to the end and take possession of eternal life. And the others, the others, well, you already know. Now, see well. Sometimes, the person treats faith with contempt because they don't see its importance, this fundamental importance in their daily life. Because if you live by faith, you live with certainty. There might be a war going on on the outside, but inside of you there is safety, there is assurance. And this assurance, this security, is what keeps you fighting and conquering. If you put this state of spirit aside, of faith, this state of trust aside, then obviously in the place of this state of faith, doubt will take over and you are going to start losing it. So all the achievements will end up in nothing. Why? because you stopped prioritizing your faith. And faith, it's a communication channel, direct and personal, non-transferable between us and God. So as long as you are keeping your faith, 
keeping it alive, then you have a relationship with Him. You have communion with Him. You are living with Him. And consequently, you are strong because on the inside, you have the power of God, which is faith. Faith is a gift the Holy Spirit gives us. And if we abandon or treat this talent, this gift with contempt, then obviously we will enter then the physical world where everything ends, everything will pass, everything, everything is vanity. Tomorrow we are going to be here talking more about this in order for you who have conquered blessings and benefits and you are still conquering blessings and benefits that you will be able to keep them because this is intelligent faith. It's not just about your church attendance. No, faith is about living it every single second of your life, every moment of your life. As long as you live like this, you are going to conquer, you are going to overcome. If not, you are going to lose. May God bless you all. And I'd like to ask you one more favor. It's that Sunday at 3 p.m., we have a movement of faith for those who have depression. If you know anybody who is depressed, please visit this person and bring them this Sunday, 3 p.m., in any universal church of the kingdom of God, because there you will find a servant of God to speak to this person suffering with depression and pass on to them what God has given them. May God bless you all. See you tomorrow.